but it's a warning to all those who are listening right now. We've got to be purposeful about the women that we choose to date. That means that just like if I'm hiring somebody for a job, I don't go much further than the interview if they don't fulfill my requirements for the job. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. Hope you are well, brother. I am. Recently, I've been dating an older woman. Things are great, but she obviously doesn't want kids, and I do. My dating days are gone, and I'm looking to settle. We broke up, but she stopped eating and contacts me a lot. I explained I want kids, but she doesn't get it. What do I do? So first, I want to back up a little bit and talk about how you got into this relationship with this woman, right? And the reason why I do this is because it's a warning, right? I'm not going to help you too much with what I'm about to say, though I'll come back to you. But it's a warning to all those who are listening right now. We've got to be purposeful about the women that we choose to date. That means that just like if I'm hiring somebody for a job, I don't go much further than the interview if they don't fulfill my requirements for the job, right? Does that make sense, right? I'm not going to bring somebody in because I like the way they look, so I'm going to let them join my company. But meanwhile, I forgot to tell him, hey, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. And then it turns out, oh, I don't do that. Right? That'd be dumb, right? The job description is laid out. It's very clear. And when we do the interview, I ask you, are you qualified? Are you capable? Are you able? Are you willing to fulfill the obligations of this job? Otherwise, we don't go much past the job interview. But yet, y'all be dating these chicks who do not fulfill the job requirements for what you're hoping to achieve. Dating with no purpose is just masturbating with someone's body. You're masturbating with their body and you're also masturbating with your time. You're wasting time. You're entertaining yourself. And that's most of the time what we're doing. We're entertaining ourselves. We're looking for a good time. I'm not saying don't look for a good time. I'm just saying now that you've got yourself in a situation where you've decided I want something more. You're stuck with a woman that you joined for a good time. You should have known, and she should have been clear, that we're just having a good time here. We're just having a good time here. And I understand, I'm, you know I'm against that, but at least be honest, right? We're just having a good time here. This is not going to go anywhere. But let's bring it up, bring it up to date. You know you want children. My question to you is, what were y'all talking about? What you, were you guys doing? What were you guys getting along about in the early stages of your dating such that this question either didn't arise or you just looked past it, right? Of course, we look past things if we're trying to have a good time. If you're having sex with this woman, you're gonna, oh, you, I talk about sex goggles all the time. You're not going to see what you should see if you're having sex. But now here you are, you've, and I'm going to put the ball in your court here because you're the man, and, and this is across the board for every, everybody. You're the man. You set the stage. You set the mission. You create the vision for your relationship with a woman. And so it's my opinion, don't get into a relationship with a woman if you don't have a vision and you don't have a mission, just like with a business. The business analogy comes up again. You don't even have a business mission. You have no vision for your business, but yet you're trying to hire employees? That don't make any sense. That's why you get to where you are right now with a useless employee. You have a useless employee in your business right now. And now that you fired that employee, it's like those guys who get fired and then they come back and start, uh, you know, they shoot up the place. <laughs> Right, maybe that's a bit, a bit extreme. Right, that's like when you when you fire an employee, and now that person has a has a vendetta. He has a vengeance out against you. Well, it's your fault if you hire that person knowing that they don't fill the job description. Right, so it's your fault. It's your fault that you are where you are, and now she is being violent. Right, and of course, you say she stopped eating and she contacts you like a lot. Being violent against yourself. For a lot of people, women and children, effeminate men do this too, 
is a sense of having power over the other, right? So, you know, like a child, I, one of my kids did this once, <laughs> very, when she was very young, where she, her mom wasn't giving her what she wanted, and so she held her breath. <gasps> she was doing this until she passed out. So she was denying herself oxygen in order to hurt her mom, right? This woman, now, she's being violent to herself in order to hurt you. Oh, I'm not eating. I'm going to starve myself to death because of you, right? Right? And look, maybe that's a legitimate means for getting things done, right? Didn't Gandhi do that when he wanted to, like, end apartheid or something in India? He was like, I'm going to go on a, on a food strike. Well, that's good for political ch uh, change, right? But to sort of manipulate you into a relationship that doesn't fit, that's violent. She's being violent. She's being manipulative, right? She's being, she's being violent against herself in order to get back at you. She's calling you, I haven't eaten in days. It's your fault. You're making me sick. So you're asking me what to do. <laughs> First of all, don't deal with women that you don't have a determined plan for dealing with, right? And if you, all you're doing is getting off on each other's bodies, just be clear. Be clear with these women. That's the other thing too, right? I don't know if it's worse for men or women, but a lot of times men get into these relationships with women and make them believe that there's going to be something more than there really is. That's diabolical, that's wrong, that's narcissistic, that's effeminate, that's weak, that's sick, that's sad, that's stupid, don't do it. I'm sure women do the same thing to you guys, and I know a lot of you guys, you know, you thought you were going to marry this girl, or you thought you all going to be together forever, and then she dumps you. The problem is, at the outset, nobody's honest about what they're doing. I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm going backwards again because I'm getting to your question. Be clear, fellas, why am I dealing with this woman? And be clear with her, what are we actually doing? So again, I'm putting the ball in your court. You messed up, you failed, and now she's being violent. I explained I don't want kids, but she doesn't get it. She's not gonna get it. She's not supposed to have kids. She don't wanna have kids. She's an older woman, she's not interested in it. She's not, she's not a good fit for you. What do you do? I already said what to do about not getting into this situation. What do you do now that you're in a situation? You got to move on, buddy. Here, you got to take your lickings. Let me put it that way, right? You have to suffer now. You get to suffer now. Let me put it that way. Not you have to. You get to suffer now so that you don't make these stupid mistakes ever again. So now whatever that suffering means, which means, oh, I feel bad for her. Good, suffer. Oh, she's calling me and bothering me and won't leave me alone. Good, suffer. She's causing uh, havoc and, and she's messing up her own life and it makes me feel guilty. Good, suffer. You got to suffer. You got to suffer for a number of reasons. You know what suffering does? It is a imprint, like a tattoo on your soul that every time you look at it, you remember, oh man, that was dumb. Right, like me, I got tattoos. I look at my tattoos and I'm like, oh man, that's dumb. You know what I do about my tattoos now that I know that I'm dumb, they're dumb? I never get another tattoo. And I tell people, don't get tattoos because I looked and they're dumb. You, you're never gonna do this anymore because you're suffering. Just like that tattoo, it hurts to get and it leaves an imprint on you. This is hurting you right now and it's gonna leave an imprint on you. Suffer, suffer. That way you never forget and you can warn other men. Don't get into relationships with women that don't fulfill the obligation of what you're looking for in a relationship. Bad idea. So I, in, in terms of practical stuff to do, I don't know what you should do. Hang up when she calls, block her from your phone, right? Stay away from her, get away from her. Don't talk to her. That's one thing you should absolutely do not do. If she calls, you don't talk to her. Whatever she does, don't contact her. You should have a strict no contact policy with her at this point because she being crazy. If she does something and makes herself sick, which I don't even think she's going to go that far. Just like, just like a kid, just like these, you know, like these teenagers who feign suicide. You, ever, you know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And I'm not knocking anybody who got mental problems. And even when I give that warning, I'm not knocking people with mental problems. People with the fucking mental problems still commenting the problems that I don't get it. 
right? Because I did that one the other day about depression. And all these depressed dickheads came in and were like, Elliot, you don't get it. Meanwhile, I legitimately gave a warning that some of y'all just got problems. I get it. <laughs> but I believe a lot of people feign suicide. Oh, I'm going to kill myself. And then they fail at that. That is, that is, that is even worse. <laughs> These people who fail at suicide. Damn, you can't even kill yourself right. You can't do anything right. I'm being facetious right now. Joking. But it's fake. Yeah, you ain't even going to kill yourself. You just try to pretend like you're going to kill yourself. Sometimes people, they go too far and they make a mistake and they kill themselves. And then they realize, oh, their soul is probably there. Like, oh, oh I actually did it. She stopped eating. You know what that means? She's fasting. Let her fast. Fasting is a good way to mourn. Let her mourn. She's mourning. Let her fast. Who cares? She's not having babies anyway. So even if she's malnourished or she turns, you know, all skinny and frail and sucked in belly and her titties dry up, who cares? She ain't making babies anyway. To me, and I'm going to sound like a jerk saying this, she's barren soil. She's a useless woman. What kind of woman ain't, she don't want no babies? Then what is your point? What is your point as a woman if you're not making babies? <laughs> World don't like to hear that. But you know what? Something that does not fulfill its created purpose is a useless thing. Right? Like a soft hammer. Right? Like who, want, who wants a soft hammer? It's created to be hard so it could bang nails in. But every time I hit it with this nail, it's, it's not doing anything. That's a useless hammer, right? A car, a car without a steering wheel. I was like, well, I get it. It's like a stock car, but I can't do what it's supposed to do. Women are created to make babies. Not saying that that's all they can do, but the height of the expression of a woman is to make babies. The pinnacle of a woman's expression is to make babies. I know the world denigrates that right now. They tell you all kinds of BS about overpopulation and garbage like that. And they make women think that they're going to be satisfied if they're CEOs and stuff like that. That's not the case. It's fake. So for all intents and, pur all intents and purposes, let her starve herself. Uh, you know, pray for her. Right? Pray for her. I hope the best for you. Repent. I already said that. But now I'm a, let, let me be a good Christian here for a moment. All the things I just said is about what you got, what you could do, right? You got to have a perspective. You got to stop making these stupid mistakes. And you just got to cut off with her because there's nothing you could do. What else can you do? Pray for her, right? Pray for her. Pray for her. Legitimately. Pray that she can overcome this and things will work out for her and that you want the best for her and even more than that, even more than the prayer. Or let me put it this way. If the prayer is, is the seed, the fruit, the real, the real fruit of what you get to do, repent. Because I already knocked you around a bit, right? And I'm making you feel bad. But now you have to formally repent. Formally repent. What does that mean? Turn around. It means, damn, wow. I did something stupid. This is all repent means. I love that word because it triggers too, just like fornication. I love using all these Christian words. That most Christians don't even use these words anymore because they're so triggering and most Christians are soft. <laughs> repent. Repent for your fornication. <laughs> but repent for the stupid mistake that you made by getting involved with a woman like this. And that means never do it again. Never do it again. That's what repent means. Someone who's truly repentant looks at what they did and say, oh, and they have a sense of contrition. They look and they say, oh, ooh, they even cringe at themselves. I cringe at some things that I have done in my past. I think about it. I try not to think about it. I ask God, I pray to God, God, please make me forget that I did that. Please make me forget that I did that. Erase that from my memory. <laughs> well, you got to treat this situation the same way. Cringe at the fact that you, that you did what you did and you strung this woman along and you got into a relationship that, that is stupid, useless, with a non-functioning woman. <laughs> and never do it again. Resolve to never do it again. I'm never going to do that again.
and then wish her, wish her well. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war as well as how it's affecting your health your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, how millions of men are fighting back and winning the war against masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit makemenstrongagain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.